So we're going to close with a um, local um, uh, presentation by uh, um, Hannah, who is uh, program director for Forum Virium here in Helsinki. And um, she's going to tell us a bit about the um, IoT and open data um, projects here um, in the close neighborhood in Helsinki. any code here. I'm the, one of these Jazzy and Hey look they say in Finnish people who just are waving hands and the other people are actually putting their talent and skills into developing. So I'm here actually to help you <laughs> to utilize the city of Helsinki as a platform for developing future city services and I will be talking a bit about what kind of role IoT uh, is already playing on it, uh, in it and, and what, what kind of role we hope to foresee in the future. So I come from Forum Virum Helsinki which is an innovation company fully owned by the city of Helsinki and we are bringing together the private sector, research institutions, the public sector and citizens to uh, innovate and co-create together the future services for the city of Helsinki. Uh, just a quick uh, uh, question, how many of you are from the uh, business side, so working for a company? And academia, research institutions, okay, good mix. We <laughs> offer opportunities for both, so I guess it's good in that sense. So we were established in 2005. Actually, we were originally established by a joint venture of companies, competitors who wanted to create an open innovation platform for uh, testing out and trying and piloting new, with new technologies. But like I mentioned, now we are uh, not for profit and fully owned by the city of Helsinki. Uh, we are approximately 45 people and uh, our topics uh, encompass all, all aspects almost of, of smart cities. So we have one team uh, dedicated for smart mobility. Uh, one is for working in our smart city uh, kind of flagship uh, area, smart Kalasatama, and then we have uh, my team, approximately 11 people uh, working on uh, uh, data and IoT and kind of uh, more like a horizontal enabling these different uh, verticals. Uh, what we are doing for the city of Helsinki and, and for hopefully for all of you for the whole ecosystem is on one hand, we are helping the city to uh, really leverage the new technologies and the digitalization at large. And then on the other hand, we are there to help uh, research institutes, companies uh, to utilize the city as a development platform, both for piloting, uh, trying out new things, but actually also to just run their services on top of it. Uh, we have also member companies, uh, some of them are uh, large and already I noticed sponsoring this event as well. Uh, then we have some key research institutions in, in Finland and then we are a very active member in various networks just like the Finnish Center of Artificial Intelligence or the EIT Digital. Uh, my team uh, is working on a pro portfolio of 11 projects from various instruments and uh, we have more than 100 European partners uh, included in this, in this collaboration that we are doing. And we have approximately 5 million euros for the upcoming three years at our hands. And what do we do then? Well, we are hoping that uh, IoT solutions can uh, help us uh, solve the everyday challenges in smart cities. Uh, we are helping the city to renew and develop the ways that data is being collected, uh, managed, uh, shared in smart cities, as well as, of course, find new ways of using the data in a smart way. Uh, then, on the other hand, uh, we are testing different kind of software and, and uh, devices, also de doing some software development ourselves uh, in my team. And we are uh, promoting building of an open modular IoT of system of systems of, or platform, depends how widely you want to uh, interpret the term platform. And we, for example, offer opportunities for developing different kind of uh, proof of concepts for connectivity solutions. I think Laura was just, I heard, mentioned here, but also uh, we, we have actually, we can 
help companies who want to get started with LoRa. Uh, we, we have a certain set of connections uh, available to be offered for companies for non-commercial use, but then we are now more and more moving forward with 5G as well. And uh, we have more and more real-time data of urban environments, as well as new kind of applications, such as uh, clean air route navigator, for example, utilizing this, this data in smart cities so that you can find a, a suitable route for you if you have uh, respiratory problems, for example. And some of the biggest achievements, I will talk a little bit more about them later, is this uh, kind of gadget uh, workshop, Vekotivertas, it's our smart city IoT hack lab in Kaapelitehdas in Ruoholahti. And uh, we are working on IoT platforms that have this consent management or my data uh, capabilities. And we've been working a long time with harmonized APIs. I will tell a bit more about that soon. So we have the same uh, approach for IoT as well. Uh, this is just a quick table of how, uh, for example, we have a lot of projects that work on the domain of air quality and, uh, and collecting more real-time, uh, accurate, uh, local uh, data. And also all the air quality projects, while they are trying to ensure that we have better quality air quality data uh, in the future for the needs, various needs in the city, at the same time we're tackling issues of crowdsourcing, of uh, data quality issues, standardization, developing new apps and services, uh, driving behavior change or making the data enabled decision making, for example, and work on platforms and third party engagement like we are doing here today. And uh, the work we do is very much rooted in openness. Uh, it's, it's actually where the whole city as a platform thinking uh, in, in, in Helsinki area has kind of I got an its start from, and I guess Pekka from my team already mentioned during some presentation earlier today, the open data that the city of Helsinki provides. Uh, we were there to help the city to launch its uh, open data clearinghouse function, which is now operated by the city of Helsinki, so hri.fi. Uh, quite soon we noticed that it's not really enough to just catalog the data, but we need to make people aware of it. We need to start uh, uh, a collaboration with the developer community so that we understand better what kind of APIs they need, what kind of documentation they find adequate and so forth. So we launched Helsinki Loves Developers uh, Software Developer Engagement Program. Uh, that has and it's still running and it it's, uh, gathers developers and the city officials around different teams uh, every month together. <coughs> but quite soon we also noticed that there's a lot of software developers are uh, working during the daytime and then they do this extra uh, open data kind of explorations in the evenings and they get really great ideas, nice visualizations, but there's not really a, a sustainable model for keeping that service alive. So uh, we started more and more engaging businesses uh, around open data. We joined forces with five other Finnish cities, Espo, where we are now, was one of them and started really uh, targeting companies, not just IT companies, but any, all kinds of uh, companies who can benefit from uh, open data, whether it's to uh, target new customer segments or, or uh, decide where you should locate your uh, business uh, and so forth. But of course, uh, growingly, uh, what we see now, for example, is uh, they need this data to train algorithms, for example. So the, the uses can be very technical or very uh, more like operational. And uh, one thing that open data has so far already enabled in Helsinki area is this mobility as a service, because we now have for the transit, <coughs> all the players in the transit field, they need to provide a ticketing API, for example, so that other players can sell tickets uh, to their mobility service. And uh, we mapped around 100 business cases of that open data. And working with companies, quite soon uh, the scale became an issue. So they were saying that it's very nice to develop a service for Helsinki, but how about we don't have the same data from other cities or we don't have it in the same format. And uh, we started uh, working more on that. Also, uh, there was a demand on for real-time data, which I said that we are already now working on. Uh, there was a 
companies had a lot of ideas on how we could collect the relevant data from the city. And like I mentioned, the connectivity uh, is, is some uh, topic that there was a demand for in, in the city service side. Then as, a, as an issue that kind of pushed us to rethink a bit about the use of personal data, of course, the GDPR uh, <coughs> has kind of at the same time brought pressure, but at the same time more opportunity, a window of opportunity of doing this thing right with the uh, personal data. So the My Data approach, which is maybe familiar to most of you. And um, I had a bit mixed in slides, but uh, so for the harmonization and the market creation, we've been actually working on that already from uh, 2012, where we were harmonizing uh, APIs with eight European cities, and then we've kind of continued, and now last two years we've been more also harmonizing the data input, so the southbound APIs. And for all these different <coughs> sorry, aspects, uh, one thing that we've been doing is to get other cities also involved in the harmonization activities. So we've been uh, uh, sharing the specs for the APIs. We've been uh, providing open source implement reference implementations. We've been giving different kind of guidelines for the decision makers in cities so that they would also start advancing on, on this topic. There's one example. But on the IoT uh, context, We've had kind of three approaches. I don't know how familiar or how, how much you see that these are becoming a, what kind of uplift uh, these, these three approaches have. But we've had the open group uh, approach with the OM, uh, OMI ODF uh, and the ecosystem around that. Then we've had uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium's uh, Sensor Things API and that specification. And then as a third thing, uh, we've had the the uh, fireware technologies and, and uh, which have now become part of the Etsy standards. Uh, and uh, we've been advancing on all of these. And what we are now <coughs> looking into with together with uh, other cities under this open and agile smart cities network is that which of these are the, the winning, uh, winning standards and that the cities can then at large start uh, implementing them. Another aspect of standardization that we've been working on that would be nice to, I don't know if we will have time to discuss what kind of uh, experiences you've had uh, so far with this, is the, the side of digital twins. So uh, Helsinki has now, for a few years already, uh, offered the 3D model, both as a semantic model and then this uh, <coughs> visually high quality uh, mesh model. And uh, what the semantic side of the model has enabled us to do is to bring the open data, uh, give, for example, very uh, detailed information about different buildings in the city, uh, open up the, the solar power potential that has been... Uh, thanks. <laughs> Too much talking today. And uh, bring it semantically uh, and link it, to, link it to the buildings. And uh, this uh, development uh, has been uh, taking place. There's been the Inspire Directive and the, the kind of standardization that comes from there. Then the city GML model that we've been now using, and then this building information model. And a bit, they are all tackling a bit different parts of or uh, different uh, level of detail. And then, uh, of course, in the IoT and the smart building side, we come to this as building automation uh, APIs and how do we get these two worlds to map together. And the uh, hope is from the city's perspective that we would have one model that covers all the different stages of the uh, building's life cycle so that we could uh, start actually bringing all this data to the same model instead of uh, also the, the sensor sensor data and, and the building uh, the conditions in different spaces and, and uh, energy management systems and so forth into the one and same model. And this is something that this uh, city GML model is now uh, looking into doing, so it's bringing really a uh, different kind of uh, application uh, domain uh, extensions, such as for noise emission or, or other, other networks, and trying to bring in this sensor, real-time sensor data uh, to this uh, semantic model so that it could be more easily 
used, and on the other hand, you could more and just easily uh, uh, refer to certain uh, uh, parts of the city or, or a building or, or even some very <laughs> detailed room or door or a, uh, or a lamp post. So the idea is, of course, then in the city, it, uh, in the city level, to be able to get more real-time data of certain assets. For example, if a lamp, uh, the light has gone out and they, there's a need for maintenance uh, activity. So get these uh, processes rolling and more automated, thanks to this uh, semantic uh, model. And from the building automation side, uh, we are hoping to move from this very detailed uh, and quite hard to use <coughs> approach is more to this, sorry, you probably can't see this model where you can actually uh, not just see the state of certain uh, uh, filter, for example, but you can start calculating cost for the maintenance operations and start managing this maintenance of the city more closely to the actual measurements of, of a certain item or, or a device or, or building or street <laughs> in the city. Another approach to this is this personal data and, and the my, my data approach that I mentioned. So based on our interpretation, a lot of this IoT-related data is actually a personal data, since there's a location or even an apartment level uh, temperature sensor can be linked back to the, the location and there through there linked back to the person living there. And that's why uh, we don't, I mean, privacy is important, but for us to get this data more into use, we think that the more important issue here is control. So those people who that data is, uh, is about, or who, who are linked to the certain data, they should be in, in control of where this data can be used, who can see it, and so forth. And that's where this uh, my data approach is coming in, so that individuals can really themselves decide which services I trust and which, which can use utilize my data and of course it can be seen as a human rights thing uh, but we also as an innovation company see it as an enabler of new innovations and services and uh, one use case of it has been in a project called climate friendly housing companies uh, where we actually uh, sorry we've been uh, trying to increase uh, of, of kind of retrofit <laughs> old uh, apartment buildings in Finland by optimizing their uh, uh, energy usage, so bringing energy efficiency through these di data-driven services. So often the situation in these centrally heated uh, apartments that we, apartment buildings that are, are the majority, <laughs> or I'm, I would say maybe all of the buildings, apartment buildings are centrally heated, uh, they have often the furthest from the heating is too cold and the one that is closer to the heating is too hot and this way we start having the lowest uh, apartment opening up during the winter their windows are getting rid of this excess heat and then uh, in, in worst case the the cold apartment starts ex putting extra heating ad additional heating and uh, we've been solving this by bringing to these uh, furthest spots uh, uh, room level uh, temperature sensors and uh, other sensors and this of course is very nice for the way to start optimizing in the housing company level the, the, the heat usage but if we would like to use this uh, sensor data for other things we need to put in place uh, models where, where actually the per people in the inhabitants can uh, themselves control and give permits for this usage so for the housing company, they have a legal basis to handle such data, that's okay, but if this uh, apartment owner or, or person renting it wants to give consent to that data further, those mechanisms are still uh, missing. So we need the consent for that. And here's, sorry, there's some issue with the pictures, a bit of an example what it could, it could enable. So as a uh, person living in an apartment, you could see that I have temperature sensor, I have humidity, and I have carbon dioxide sensor. And you could see that uh, you don't have any subscription of any services. You could then go to check what kind of services are available with these kind of data sources that I'm having. Uh, there's, for example, the highest one is uh, the local energy uh, provider. 
and each of these services could say that uh, they, they can offer, th their sales argument is that they offer 25% of uh, energy saving or 15% of energy efficiency, for example. You then choose one service, uh, you click that I will uh, give this uh, service the right to read my data, you subscribe to it, and then it could start offering you visualizations, for example, based on that data, or even if it's two-way uh, uh, system, you could, of course, allow it even to control some of the elements uh, in, in your apartment if you wish to do so. So this is kind of easy. I mean, if you think of the same uh, applied to health data or any, uh, any other kind of data, you can see many, many, many opportunities. This is just, it's maybe more harder to think of different use cases for this specific data, but we felt that this is a bit less sensitive data that is an easy way for us to start rehearsing with with this topic. <coughs> then on the platform side of things, like if you talk technology-wise, not just as an innovation uh, platform, we have taken some steps to uh, advance on that, and I know we are here in an event organized by a platform uh, <coughs> community, but uh, I'll just quickly tell a bit what cities have been kind of looking for, and, and maybe that can help your community to better respond to those needs. So uh, we, together with City of Antwerp and oops, here's some animation, and Copenhagen, set out this pre-commercial procurement process where we start together with the, with, with the market discussing uh, the offering and the city needs and then uh, working on solutions to match better the needs of the city. And we had a, a call out for this uh, Internet of Everything platform and uh, we started off with the market consultation, then we had, I think, 30 uh, applications for the first stage, just uh, uh, creating concepts. From there we selected, I think, 10. And then in the last stage we have now uh, three companies who have actually <coughs> came to Helsinki and Antwerp to test their platform services. Here's some of the criteria we have had, so these basic things like user centricity, uh, co-creation and so forth. Uh, from the technical side of things, it had to be open source, uh, <coughs> distributed, decoupled, so forth. I guess quite basic things. And where we are now with that procedure, so we have three companies uh, who got to the last stage. Uh, they've been now trying their, ser I mean, uh, implemented their service and platform to, to Helsinki and Antwerp. You can, if you are interested, I guess these slides will be shared. You can check them out and you can see what kind of like dashboard tools they have created. The ambition level was that it should be a platform that is very easy uh, to use both for the citizens but city officials and develop. Uh, it should be very developer friendly so that you can build new uh, dashboards and services on top of that. Uh, I mean, the, the concept management uh, side of things was there as well. So it was quite a lot of uh, requests and now we are eager to see wh when they finalize their solutions that how far did they get, but uh, check them out if you want to have kind of a benchmark on, on where these consortiums are. And uh, just a little bit uh, what's coming up as ne uh, next, we are now moving even uh, more forward with the open, uh, urban open platform development. Uh, City has a new ambitious digitalization strategy. They will create data strategy. Uh, they will have some uh, guidelines or, or like kind of uh, principles of IoT usage in the city and so forth. So we are just ready to start implementing all that into the work we do. Uh, we want to have citizens as active players in this, both as data uh, users, of course, but also collecting uh, data and, and this learning about this consent and all the, the kind of uh, services that that mechanism can uh, enable for them. We need companies uh, to, uh, of course, develop these top uh, solutions for us. And for that, the city really has to be a top-notch uh, platform so that the, it's, uh, uh, the developer experience is good and, and for the companies it's clear that what are the service level agreements and so forth. And we hope the city itself utilizes uh, this uh <coughs> platform and, and is, is able to really take everything out of the data, whether it's internal, open or external. 
So we have quite big uh, crowdsourcing uh, experiment going on on air quality. So we've been recruiting 350 people to uh, both. Uh, some of them have uh, uh, sensors on their balconies. Some of them are carrying these mobile uh, carry-on sensors throughout the day with them to help us to learn about collecting uh, more accurate air quality data. Then another thing with these cheaper sensors that we are using here is, of course, uh, some of the data quality issues that we, we hope to solve. Uh, so uh, start improving data quality with machine learning and, and in general uh, develop our data processes and improve them. And we're working with Helsinki University on, on that, but if there are others who want to work on these topics, uh, please come and talk to me afterwards. Uh, one thing in the city side, when you're working with public sector, this uh, AI ethics is the one big thing that city of Helsinki is now actively working on together with other cities. And I think it's very important, so we make sure that we are building the kind of future that we want to see. Some very concrete uses of AI, we've been uh, uh, t uh, starting to, uh, or started a pilot with this, uh, demand response already uh, thermostats in apartment buildings and that's been already uh, promising there's 15 less 15 percent less uh, in energy used in the apartments that utilize these these uh, smart thermostats but it's not all about those solutions we also need to, in the ai side work on the platform level and i don't know how many of you are uh, Horizon 2020 uh, a funding user, but uh, there's going to be upcoming calls where actually uh, it's stated that uh, that you need to also build upon this uh, AI for EU platform that is now being built, and we are also a partner in that project. And if you, uh, you're not uh, directly uh, interested in applying for uh, Horizon funding, this project has also upcoming open calls so that you can, as a company, come and, uh, and develop your solutions on top of that platform. The next open call opens next year. I think I'll start uh, going a bit further. So at Forum Virum Helsinki, we are really aiming to get uh, to the point where smart cities uh, can really be data enabled. So uh, we hope that data, no matter if it's uh, open, <coughs> closed or personal data, that it could help bring value both for individuals and society. And to achieve this, we are collaborating with the city and companies, ecosystems like yours, and how we are trying to reach out to you as well is that we offer um, our openly licensed asset uh, in, in, in this technology directory that we have created. You can check that out. There's uh, data from our experiments there's uh, specifications of these APIs that I mentioned that we've been harmonizing. There's software components and then there's more information about getting to these uh, connectivity trials that we do. Uh, the IoT Hack Lab in Kaapelitehdas is, is there for you if you want to come and start building things there. And then I mentioned some of the open calls, but if you want to stay tuned to what kind of funding opportunities we have, please check our website for this uh, uh, open calls for pilots and experiments so that it kind of brings, makes it smoother to get started uh, utilizing Helsinki as a platform. So I'm here to discuss till after the session for a moment if you have some ideas how you would like to utilize Helsinki as a platform for your pilots and services. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here's the first question. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, <coughs> <coughs> so um, at the beginning, so on the your presentation has many parts. Yes, the first yeah. one is uh, based more on on sensors, yes. which I guess is caters to this community maybe a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the on the few standards that you use for serialization to use the same or some common data model, um, some well known ones were not there. And, mm. and I was wondering, um, well, uh, for instance, if you have had heard of uh, ITF standards like CNML or uh, yeah, or, or others, basically. Like the, you mentioned three, uh, one based in Etsy and 
And the other two I don't remember. Yeah, honest. open group and open geospatial consortium. I guess it yes. depends a bit on which level of, of uh, uh, standards you're talking about. Are you talking directly in the in the sensor level? Because and this and is more about data the data serialization, data okay. standard. Okay, that one and I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we can chat more well, later. Well, let's talk. Thank yeah, you. let's yeah. talk more. Other questions or comments? Yeah, just quickly about the funding and open goals. They usually vary from. The smallest are 10,000 euros, and then they go up to 340,000 euros per pilot. But, but then those are a lot longer pilots. But just uh, keep keep the motivation to keep following <laughs> this. Like, uh. Okay. Okay. Thanks, and uh, thanks for being brave enough to take the, <laughs> the final presentation of the day. <laughs> so, so thank you, speakers again.